Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tank Ducom video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We have a ton of stuff to get through in today's video, all revolving around AMD and NVIDIA. I want to start things out, though, with Ryzen 5000, aka Cezanne APUs. And this information comes to us via Patrick Schur. Hopefully, I've pronounced that name correctly. He is a Twitter user and has leaked several things which we're going to be discussing in this video. But as I mentioned, first things first are the Ryzen 5000 series APUs. And as the name implies, these are obviously the successor to the Ryzen 4000. They were based on the Zen 2 architecture, but these will be based upon Zen 3. And basically what we have here, thanks to Patrick, is confirmation that the uh, CCXs of this particular design will be unified. So essentially, we have a unified level 3 cache, which is basically what AMD kind of let the cat out of the bag with when they were going over Milan. And obviously, this should have benefits, particularly given the, well, frankly, desktop nature of Cezanne. In theory, we should see better game performance, as, let's say, CCX, or should I say Core Group 1, has uh, data in its level uh, free cache, which the other uh, group of processors needs to access. There won't be so much of a latency penalty for that, which could definitely improve performance. How much? Who the heck knows? But we also do have the IPC gains anyway, which specifically for Zen 3 looks to be mostly integer related. It's about 15 to 17%. There is some debate on that. But either way... Um, I do believe that uh, we will see a pretty nice performance bump with Cezanne, although it still seems to be based on the Vega architecture, unfortunately. These processors will still be 8 cores, 16 threads, so there's no particular difference there. But moving on from Cezanne, we also have Epic, uh, which obviously the next generation will succeed Rome, and these of course will also be based on Zen 3. And we also learn that these are still going to be 64 cores. Um, so as I leaked um, kind of earlier on, one of the early pieces of Zen 3 news that I did leak from the exclusive was that the core slash thread count for Zen 3 products will remain consistent for Zen 2 products. This is for a plethora of reasons. One are bandwidth constraints. Two is that AMD doesn't feel they need to increase the uh, number of cores slash threads to compete with Intel. And of course, there are other concerns as well, just like scaling, for example, of the products. And let's take a theoretical 4950X. Mm, do we really, at this point, need more than 16 threads, uh, sorry, 16 cores, 32 threads, for the mainstream? Let's be honest, not so much at the moment. So AMD doesn't want to eat too much into its product offerings, for example, Thread Ripper or what have you anyway. But getting back to the point, uh, Epic Milan is, in, of course, currently engineering samples, and we actually have a result on GitHub, and it has an OPN code, and it seems to indicate that the CPU clocks to 2.2 gigahertz. You can read the code yourself. It's 100, lots of zeros, 11, 4, dash, 07, 22, 15, with the 15 representing the base frequency, and of course the 22 representing the boost frequency. Once again, this is still going to be a 64 core processor, which means that that's 128 threads, but there are of course dual socket servers, or sorry, dual socket boards, so you could double this to naturally 128 cores, 256 threads, which is exactly what we have, of course, for Rome anyway. But obviously it is on a more up-to-date architecture. We're not done yet. Another Twitter user by the name of Zengoretz, hopefully once again I've pronounced that correctly, has actually discovered Vermeer samples. Vermeer, just to clarify, are the Ryzen 4000 series desktop processors. And we actually have a ID here which is 00A20F10H. And this has now been confirmed. It appears to be a B0 stepping. We don't know super amounts at the moment. We've already seen various um, leaks 
for the uh, Ryzen 4000 series, which does seem to indicate that these CPUs will be hitting mm, 4.9-ish at the moment on boost, which is not too shabby, honestly. That was the last piece of Zen news, but there is actually a piece of Zen 2 news, believe it or not. And this actually is regarding Van Gogh, which is again an APU, but a little different. It's an ultra low power APU, so it's not something necessarily you're going to be super duper excited for, let's say, in a desktop environment. But if you're, let's say, building, I don't know, like a, a laptop, like a portable system, then this would be perfect. It's configurable, of course, in terms of the TDP power requirements. It's from about 7.5 watts, which is, I believe the technical term is bupkus, and up to 18 watts, which, you know, is just a smidgen, I believe, over what the Nintendo Switch draws. I think the Switch is 15 watts, if memory serves. So you're looking at half the power of the Nintendo Switch consumes to about smidgen over what the... Um, what the switch consumes and anyway once again patrick shaw has once again hopefully i'm pronouncing that name correctly if not i profusely apologize has actually confirmed this it's on the ff3 slash bga platform and it once again is seven and a half to 18 watts it's zen 2 based and is based upon nave which uh, supporting lp ddr5 so this is Apparently RDNA 2, which is interesting given the rumours of Cezanne, is that it's Vega based. So it's kind of interesting that AMD have done that. Maybe it's because RDNA 2 has such a drastic increase in performance per watt. Uh, we have no information, of course, exactly at the moment on terms of the final specifications of these GPUs. But um, they apparently are built using a drastically cut down variant of the Nave 21 technology. But switching things to Team Green, we have further information concerning the prices now of the RTX 30 series. I would stress that prices can and will change up until the last minute, but with that said, I believe that these are probably sounding about right for the RTX 30 series. I thought that the 2000 US dollar price, which was kind of rumored for a while of the 3090, was a bit too high. I think no one would really want to cough that up. I think that Nvidia would have faced a ton of criticism, despite the fact that there was like 24 gigabytes of RAM on the thing. Even so, 2000 US dollars, that's a lot of cash. But I do believe that. Um, these prices do sound kind of accurate. And again, we have a Twitter user, this time James Garnet Sunset is his username. And we have um, the prices of four cards the RTX 3060, which is going to be 400 US dollars. The 3070 is an extra $200. Then once again, you go up another $200 for the 3080. And then finally, the 3090 is going to be 1400 bucks. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, A, these prices could be inaccurate. However, we will get to another uh, thing concerning the pricing in just a second. And B, there is a huge gulf, like the gap between the 3080 and the 3090 is gargantuan. Like, you know, the Pacific Ocean is smaller than this. It's such a big gap. It's like, it's profound. It's essentially saying that the 3090 is almost double the price of the 3080. So I believe there's a very good chance that NVIDIA will launch a 3080 Ti and they will probably start to fill out the product stack over the next couple of months. I'll probably get the, you know, the, the basic kind of stack out of the way, the low end cards to the high end cards, and then they'll start to replace them. I'm actually really interested of the performance and I'm interested in also your opinions on this, like what cards, uh, ones that tickle your fancy. For me, I am always curious of the lowest end cards and the highest end cards. Um, I think the, the performance of the 3060 in terms of hardware-based ray tracing with DLSS is really, really really piquing my curiosity because if the rumors of a drastically increased uh, um, performance when we're running like hardware-based ray tracing the rumors are anything from like 
twice his performance. Some people are even saying three times the performance. But um, let's say it's twice the performance of the RTX, you know, of the previous generation. But obviously, you've also got a nice, healthy bump in terms of traditional rasterization performance. And also, NVIDIA continues to push DLSS, which I believe is pretty damn obvious that they will. Um, in fact, Jansen recently in an interview, I don't remember who, uh, it might not have been an interview, it might have been a financial statement. He basically said that they're going to be doubling down even harder on RTX features for the next generation cards. He feels that there's still tons of opportunities to push the technology. So I'm very curious to see if hardware-based ray tracing is going to be really just very much possible at 1440p for the 3060, especially if you're willing to do DLSS. And as for the 3090, the card I think is going to be absolutely monstrous. I mean, let's just be honest, for the price, you would expect the performance to be just, well, gargantuan. And again, we also have another piece of 3090 news, and this is the actual design of its card. It looks honestly kind of nice. It's again... The dual um, fan design with one fan apparently on the front and one fan at the rear. And we also have the RTX 2080. Assuming this image is legitimate, obviously there are tons of good fakes at the moment. But I do believe that there is a pretty good chance that this is legitimate. And the leaker in this particular case has also confirmed that we're going to be looking at around the 1400 US dollar mark. And again... This image came for us from Garnet Sunset. So I think at this point is a very good chance that we are going to be looking at uh, around the 1400 US dollar mark for one of these cards. There is, of course, always a very good chance that uh, the custom AIB models might be a little more expensive, and I'm hoping that there's no shortage. I also wonder if one of the reasons NVIDIA have managed to bring down the price, and Amy covered this um, a couple of days ago, I think, the prices of um, DRAM and SSDs, but obviously SSDs don't really matter to Ampere, um, is apparently coming down. So it's, it's actually really well timed, given A, the next generation consoles, and B, well, you know, the cards, which probably the main focus for us anyway at this point. Also, as a quick reminder, one of my exclusives recently was that at least according to the information that the chap received, there is actually no um, second uh, die on the GPU. So there is no, like, GPU uh, plus the uh, secondary processor, which is supposed to help with, you know, uh, hardware-based ray tracing or denoising. Apparently, that's not the, the case. Um, and if that is true, which obviously I can't verify it, but if that is true then I'm going to be very curious to see a block diagram of what NVIDIA have actually done for the Ampere GeForce cards. So yeah, um, I'm really excited for the next generation of GPUs. I really am. It's not to say that, you know, the 2080 Ti is going to be bad suddenly when it releases, but I, GPUs have always been what interests me about PCs. Like, I... Even back in the days of, like, 3DFX, I got super hyped when I was seeing the news of, like, Voodoo 2s. And um, what really got me into GPUs, actually, was when I was first reading about, like, you know, how consoles, the 3D consoles, were working. Let's say, like, the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. And then, obviously, we saw companies like 3DFX launching the Voodoo cards because... Uh, the prices actually of RAM were coming down at the time so that they could afford to actually bring cards into the, you know, mainstream desktop. And that's what really kind of made me excited about 3D cards all the way back then. Um, and given there is so much excitement about what NVIDIA are going to be bringing to the table, hopefully it's not disappointing. I don't speak with um, any real knowledge of what NVIDIA are doing to the feature set. I can make some guesses. But um, I think that they are going to be a very powerful set of cards. I think AMD, though, are also not going to be disappointing with RDNA 2. I think, you know, the rumor is that RDNA 2 is going to be significantly cheaper. And I think that NVIDIA may be more power hungry than AMD. 
But, um, I mean, you can do the basic math yourself for RDNA 2. All you have to do is say double the number of compute units for RDNA 1, and you can crank the clock frequencies up, you know, let's say 10 to 20%, which I think is a pretty, pretty safe bet, given what the consoles are hitting. And then you just kind of add a tiny bit of extra performance, you know, imaginary for IPC gains, and even in conservatively, assuming that there's not something really just terribly wrong with the scheduling on the GPU and, you know, how the shader engines or whatever receive data, you can imagine that these GPUs are going to be pretty damn impressive. It's just, I don't know if it's going to be sufficient to compete with, let's say, an RTX 1390, given the rumors of the increasing number of CUDA cores and shaders and just the ridiculous stuff that NVIDIA are doing with, allegedly anyway, with the um, hardware-based ray tracing. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, the normal stuff. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll also give a quick plug and suggest that you check out my xbox series x first part of like the analysis of the hot chips conference i went pretty exhaustively into the cpu and gpu uh some stuff on the hardware based ray tracing and some of that does touch on rdna2 as well with all of that said though thank you very much for watching